The idea of all of these talks is to examine and talk about how design can help with the really big issues that the world is facing. Climate change being perhaps the one that's the, the biggest problem, the, the scariest problem. We all know designers are really concerned about these issues. You walk around Dutch Design Week and there's lots of projects that address the big issues in the world. But how can design make a difference? How can the solutions that designers come up with scale up? How can we persuade politicians and corporations and the, the people that have the real power that these ideas uh, are valid? And how can we start to make meaningful change? Lonnie, your project is not directly related to climate change, is it? But it is related to resource depletion. It is related to the unsustainable way that we're living. And all of these issues are kind of linked together, aren't they? Yeah. In our project, we are looking at the local surroundings to see how we can make glass from that. It started actually by fascination. And then slowly we come into more and more stories. And then we understood that sand is actually uh, getting scarce and that there is illegal sand mining, and that the Dubai is uh, taking whole beaches to put in concrete. 15 million cube of sand is put in concrete every year. Um, so we really have to think about how we are building. Yes, and as we'll hear when Babette speaks, like construction industry is one of the big causes of climate change in itself. Yeah, I made a book about the environment. It's called The Verborgen Impact, or Hidden Impact. I made this book because in the beginning of 2014 I heard some stuff that really scared me uh, about the environment and I realized rich countries moved a lot of our industry and agriculture to low-wage countries and there they make a lot of stuff which we import and buy but this Production has lots of impact on the environment, but we have no idea because we usually leave out all that impact. Then I translated hidden impact to our daily lives because I want to know what I can do about it, what you can do about it. So I made an impact top 10. I had it calculated. And on number one is product. It's stuff. And electronics is a big part of that. And number two is meat. Then comes house. Then comes the car. So it's, it's actually it's a different lineup than the one we are used to, because usually we look at visible impact, which is climate effects within our national borders. We are designers. We can come up with new ideas. We can create a vision of how we can transform the world, because we really need a paradigm shift to make this happen, to make it right again. Anna Martijn van Kestrim. Can you give us a couple of examples of the types of projects that are in your exhibition that address climate change? And also, how do you then take that small idea and convince the powers that be to adopt it? Change the system shows more than 50 national, international designers and artists that relate to this new engagement, showing what design can do. There is an algae lab of Eric Larebeek who's basically saying we should stop completely with plastics and the oil production society and we need to go on to step into algae and different biopolymers. There is Melis Smets with the human power factory. Basically he's saying if we are going to implement all the programs of our government in the needs to create energy, then the whole landscape will, will be completely changed and there will basically not be even enough space to create all these energy plants and all these windmills and sun energy. He basically said it's, it's more important to realize how much energy you are consuming. So if you see yourself as a human factory, a human energy factory, how much energy can you take from the system and how much do you need to bring in it to be in zero emission? Understanding that, what it means to get warm water out the tap, that's so powerful. Richard, I know you haven't got a winner of the climate challenge yet, but give us some indication of the types of projects that have been entered, and then how will you help those designers persuade governments or, or people who can scale these things up? How do you stop it just being a nice idea yep. and help it become yep. something that takes yep. off? Now, first of all, um, I'm the founder of, of What Design Can Do. What Design Can Do is a, a, a platform uh, focusing on uh, societal issues and how to address them with design. At this moment, we are focusing on uh, climate change or climate action. It's a program that we are uh, running at this moment, and we will do this for the coming two years. 
many of the projects have some kind of a level of uh, education in it. We have a very uh, sort of an iconic project. It's about a parking lot. And as soon as it starts to rain heavily, the whole garage comes up. So then suddenly it becomes an icon, sort of a signal that we're not able to deal with our water. Design is always about strategy and how, how can, again, how can you make people aware? And then also the question of scale, taking things to the next level. I know you've got um, IKEA supporting you, and IKEA is a huge company that makes stuff. Do you find that these big corporations that are often the ones that are seducing people to buy stuff that's damaging, are they listening to you or do they think it's nonsense or are they, are they changing, are they coming on board with this way of thinking? To be very honest, I find it a difficult question to answer because first of all, IKEA and IKEA Foundation, of course they are from, from the same founders, so to say, but um, IKEA Foundation really has a very different uh, proposition and they, they focus on all kinds of humanitarian issues and, and IKEA group, and so the shops with all the stuff, they don't. What we, do, what we are doing here now with the challenge, the foundation is, 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 is extremely uh, involved with that. And I'm uh, convinced that if we are able to find one or two or three or four projects that we can scale up, they will support us in, in doing that. But again, we should also not overestimate it because it's always only, only a few uh, projects are able to, to, to make it through that whole, whole line of acceleration and stuff in like the, that. Can I add something to that? Sure. Because in uh, preparing the, the exhibition, we did a, a series of interviews which are bundled in a, in a small booklet. And one of the, the statements, I remember Malkit Shoshan, one of the participants, saying, there's nothing, nothing so rigid as a system. And there's no system that wants to change. The problem if you work with corporations is that you're always within a system and it's very, very, very hard. Even if there is the willingness to change, it's difficult to make a change in that system. What we realized with these interviews is that when a designer is working singular as an, as an almost autonomous person who is collaborating with companies like that, then they can start to sort of interfere into, into the system. And that's the moment when changes are going to happen. The role just, is very important of the designer to, to, keep, to, to stick to that autonomy and not relate too much to the company that you work with. Sorry. Sorry, yeah. Uh, no, because I, I don't really agree, uh, or perhaps it's not just um, the fact that, that we as designers can create awareness, because it's not enough. What we, have, what we can do, what we have the power to do, is that we can think of new ways to solve problems. That's what we do as designers. We can solve problems and come up with other ways to, um, to answer a, a problem. And I think that's our role. It's not just the awareness, because it's not good enough. Uh, we, we can create a vision. We can create new things. We can uh, uh, re rethink and reshape the world. Uh, so I think we should step up with our ambitions and also not just uh, go for, okay, climate is going to change, let's just uh, try to uh, save what can be saved. No, it's not, we're not there yet. We can still do so much to prevent a lot of worse things going to happen. Let's try to do that first. And then, okay, at the same time, it's also and, and. Uh, we should be prepared for what is coming. But let's first of all try to yeah, but, but maybe if I can interrupt. prevent. I think that, we, that nobody will disagree with this. Of course, we have to, to, to change the world and make things better. But I think it's a very important question how we can do that and how can design be uh, uh, pivotal in that? How, how, and, and, of course, we can, can shout, and, yeah, we have to change everybody and everything. And, of course, but yeah. the real question is how. Maybe you can say Start something about that. Start with the big it's, things. It's, uh, it, no, it's, it's I don't a, agree. It, it starts small. Um, <laughs> exactly. And, and no. it starts really small. Um, and um, I think it's nice what you say for about uh, that systems are very rich. It's actually, that, that's what we are facing also in our project, for example, with, the, with the making from local sand glass, that the industry doesn't want to co cooperate with us because they have a certain way of producing, and that's all about efficiency and all about mass production. I bet you said that manufacturing and using plastics is not the problem. Yes. It's throwing them away, creating pollution with them, because there was the algae project you were talking yeah. about in your exhibition, Anna-Martin, 
Um, we could replace plastic with algae, or we could just use plastic more responsibly. Babette, explain a bit more about that point that you made. Yeah, um, uh, um, I researched uh, plastic pollution for the latest edition of my book, and um, one of the findings is that uh, producing plastic is not uh, uh, doesn't have a lot of impact. You can make over 1,000 plastic small plastic bags from one liter of gasoline. Using plastic and uh, producing plastic is not the, the problem, but uh, throwing it in nature, that's the problem we should solve. But an also another one which is really strange is that one of the biggest um, causes of microplastics is not in the bathroom at all. It's from tire wear. If you drive for one kilometer, you have uh, released more microbeads into the nature than you do in one year in the bathroom. So that's why I, I think this is important information because if you know where the big impacts are, you can act on those. Because otherwise it might be that you're uh, trying to solve very small things and you can only do so much per day or in your work. To wrap things up, I think some really interesting things have come out of the talk. And there's two kind of ideas that maybe sound like they conflict, but I don't think do, is that start small, but designers should be working on big things. So it's like you can make a sm small contribution to a, a big topic. Yeah. What can designers do, to paraphrase the name of your organization? <laughs> what should everyone who's in here who's a designer, hands up who's a designer in the room? What, what is the one thing you would say to them to go out and do now after this talk? Now, I think it's really important uh, that we as designers are all aware of the fact that we can make things uh, tangible, that we can make things uh, visual, that we can bring feeling and passion into it. I think that's the real power that design can bring. Um, there's a lot of innovation and a lot of so-called technolo technology and innovation, all these fancy words. I think that uh, uh, designers are able to translate that in stuff and services and systems that people can understand. So that's your role as uh, being a designer. I think the, the, the power of an idea, of one creative idea is huge, can be huge. And that's I think that we should all incorporate. As a designer, uh, stay, stay, stay true to yourself, be humble, realize that you will not do it alone, that you have, that you're part of a chain. Uh, don't set a solution, but set a target to get there. And uh, the impact of creativity is huge in our lives. So I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a believer of the solutions. Yeah, I think it's both. So I think it's, uh, first of all, find out how you can have the, the, the biggest leverage, where you can do the, the, the biggest, where you can have the biggest positive impact, and then make it actionable. So. It's kind of my slogan is think big, act now. I think, I think I should stay very closely to, to ourselves. Um, I'm also teaching at the Design Academy. I'm uh, witnessing that a lot of students want to save the world. And I really say to them, it really starts with uh, first to understand your grains and your uh, tools and, 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 and uh, your frustrations, your fascinations, and make a project which you like yourself and then maybe think about how can you scale it up. It's a very lovely line to end on, and I've got five more suggestions for what people can do. They should buy Babette's book, they should go to the Van Voyman's exhibition, they should go and see Lonnie Sand exhibition. And Nadine. Take Lonnie and Nadine's Sand exhibition. Take part in your next challenge and come to your conference. Absolutely. And read about this talk and all the other what, good design for a bad world topics on Dazeen. Thank you very much, everybody. I'm sure the speakers will be around for a few minutes. Uh, thanks for coming and thanks for Dutch Design Week for giving us this platform.